We are going to do a chi-square goodness of fit test using either Excel or Google Sheets. The steps are going to be exactly the same. Now, if you're looking for a video to show you how to do this either by hand or with a calculator, take a look at the links down in my description below, or you can click on the card here. I'm Angie. Let's go ahead and dive right in. In this example, we've got 150 students, and we want to know if they are showing a preference for um, showing a preference for their class time. Um, of those 150, they've been distributed between the 9, 10, and 11 o'clock classes, um, 31, 63, and 56. Now, we would expect a difference. The question is, is there a significant difference or a significant preference? We call these values our observed. Um, our expected values, if we're looking to see if there's a preference, would be if there was no preference between the three. If there was no preference between the three class times, I would expect 150 to be divided evenly between these three, 50, 50, and 50. So we've got our observed and our expected values. Now, if you were to do the formula by hand, you would use it here. It's a lot like um, a percent change formula. The big difference is that we're squaring everything, which is why we've got a right tail test only. I also have my hypotheses here. If my chi-square measure, if they're close to zero, there's not a significant difference. That means that we are showing that there's no preference with our data in those class times. If we do find it significantly different from this 50-50-50, then we are showing that there is a significant preference. This is really easily done in either Google Sheets or Excel. Again, my steps are the same. So I went ahead and took our observed data and put them over here into Google Sheets or Excel, same thing. I also copied the data over and I put it in an observed and expected table. So the enrollment data goes under observed, that's our actual data. The expected data, I know it's going to be 50-50-50, but if it doesn't work out quite that nicely with your data, you can go ahead and add up your data here. And I'm just going to write equals sum. I'm going to put a parenthesis, and then I am clicking, dragging, and holding over my data, and I get 150. And I want to go ahead and do 150 divided by 3. So I type equals 150 divided by 3, and then enter. I want to fill this all the way through. So I'm going to click on that value. Notice how when I click on it, I get this little blue square in the bottom corner. I hover until I get that hashtag or that plus mark, and then I'm going to click, hold, and drag and get 50 all the way through. Next, I want to do my observed minus expected squared. I'm working toward the chi-square measure. I'm going to have one of these fractions for each of my data values, and then I'm going to add all of those values together. I'm again going to do this using a formula. So I'm going to go equals, and I want to do exactly what I see at the top of that column. So equals parentheses, I'm going to grab my first observed value and click on it, minus my second value, which is the expected value, click on it, parenthesis, squared, so caret 2, and then divided by, and then I'm going to click on my expected value again and hit enter. Now I do want to auto fill this one, so it give, if it gives you the option, say yes. Otherwise, you can do what I'm doing here, and that's to click on that value, get that blue square, um, click, drag, and hold there until you get all of those values. So I went ahead and did all of that. Um, I've got one more step here to get to, to the chi-square, and that's to add all of these together. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down here. What I've got in the red box is a two-step process. The first step gets you to the chi-square statistic. So if you need that value, this is the way to go. The second step in the red box is the p-value. Then I'm going to take you to the orange box, which is a single step p-value method, and this would work great if you don't need the chi-square measure. So my chi-square here is going to be equal to the sum of those values above. So I'm going to go parenthesis, I'm going to click, hold, and drag over those values, and then hit enter. This is my chi-square value. To get the p-value, I'm going to call for this function. So I'm going to go equals, and the function I've got typed right there. So I start typing chi-square.
And I'm looking for this chi-square distribution with a right tail. That's what we've got in our graph. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. It tells me what I need. I need my, it says X, but that's just my measure. So my measure is my chi-square measure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my 11.32, the chi-square that we just calculated, and then comma. Now it needs degrees of freedom. This is number of data values minus one. We've got three data values. Subtract one, degrees of freedom is two, and then you can hit enter. So there's my P value. It's very, very small, which means that I'm going to be rejecting my null hypothesis and saying that there is a significant difference or a preference. Now, the single step is really nice if you don't need the chi-square statistic and you just need that p-value. To do this one, I'm going to go equals chi-test, so C-H-I, and I'm looking for that just chi-test. It needs just the observed and expected. So if you're doing it this way, you don't need to do any of the other calculations. I'm going to grab the observed. So I'm going to click, drag, click, hold, and drag, and then comma. Click, hold, and drag over my expected, and then enter. So I get the same exact p-value. Now again, my p-value is smaller than my significance level, which means that I would, in fact, reject the null hypothesis, and I would conclude that we've got a significant preference. Any questions that you've got for me, go ahead and put those down below. I really look forward to hearing from you. Um, and again, check out my other videos if you want to see how to do this either by hand or using the graphing calculator. Thank you so much for watching.